So hello everyone and welcome back to the today's video of our GFG Puted Streak of day 105. So today's question is of easy category. So since the bunch of days we were getting the medium and hard type of questions, so this was very necessary to like lighten up our mood. So let's begin our question and before beginning the question, if you're new to this channel, if you like my content, then please like, share and subscribe so that you can learn, grow, maintain our streak together. Coordinates of the last cell in a matrix which performing given operations exits from the matrix. Okay, the question itself is very confusing <laughs> by the name, but let's see. So it's an easy cat category question and it says that given a binary matrix of n cross m, one can perform given operations into the matrix. Okay, and the operations given are, if the value of the matrix is zero, then traverse in the same direction and check the next value. Okay, and if the value of the matrix is one, then update the matrix to zero and change the current direction from up, right, down, left, throughout, right, down, left, up respectively. Okay, so if it is up, then move right and route. And if it is right, then move down. If it's down, move left and left and up respectively. Okay, so initially you have to start from cell zero and zero to move in the right direction. Okay, so it's fixed that you have to start from zero comma zero and you have to move in right direction. That is fixed here. The task is to find the indices of the matrix which leads to outside the matrix from the traverse cell to the given matrix cell zero by zero by performing the operations. So if we look at this first matrix, what it is happening is that for zero, it is zero, right? Uh, let me let me get to the paint part. Then it will be better for the visualization thing. So today's day is 105. So I hope you are maintaining your streak. And let's see. So the array elements were given was zero, one and one zero. So what it was saying that we have to start from zero comma zero and I have to move in the right direction. So when I'm at this point, right? What I will do since the element is zero, then I, then I have to follow the same direction. So I will move right. But since now the element has changed, right? And the directions were right that if, if, if it is up, then right, then down, and then left. If it is like this, then you have to move like this, right? Down, left, and up. Like if you are moving right, then you have to move down, right? For right, you have to move down. So since, you, since I have encountered one, so I will move down, right? Now I'm at, I'm at the element zero and if, if the case was zero, then you have to follow the same direction. So if I follow the same direction, I will go out of bound, right? So the moment at the cell where you found that you have to go out of the bound, what is the index of this cell? Index of this cell is, let's say this was zero and one, this was zero and one. So index of this cell will be, this cell will be one comma one. And this is our answer, right? Let us verify from this test case. So this is one comma one, right? Let's dry run the second test case also and then we'll jump to our uh, conclusion that how we can proceed on. So it is 0, 1, 1, 0. Let me write it for you. 0. Let me write it with 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Right? And what is the next numbers? 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. And let's name the indexes. So it will be 0, 1, 2 will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? This is the thing. What I need to do here is that if it is 0 and initially I move in right, so it was 0 and 0 and I have to move right. This is fixed. Now 1 is encountered and for right, the opposite, the direction respectively you have to move is down. So from here I will move down. Since this is 0, I will follow the same direction and I will again move down from here. Now, since, since this is one, I need to change the direction for down. It is mentioned as left. So I need to take left here. Right? Let me uh, show this it show this with different color. So I, I took left here. And since this is one again, right, since this is one again, then what I need to do. Okay. And whenever we are encountering one, we need to update that thing as zero also, right? So this will be updated as zero. This will be updated as zero. And what is the direction now we are, do, we are going left so for for left if the element is one we need to go up right we need to go up so where i will go now i will go here now again this is one i will update it as zero and since we are following the direction up up and the element was one we need to reverse the direction up to right so what so the next move i will make is from here to here since this is zero i will again move right now i encountered the element again as one i will make it as zero and for the right thing i have the uh, corresponding direction is down so i will move down from here right then again i have one i will update it as zero and for the down i need to move left so i will move left 
Now since this is zero again, so I will move again left. Since it's zero again, I will move again left. And if you see that you are going out of bounds from which cell, from this point of cell, you moved right, right? So that's that. So that's the two point two comma zero is the answer. So I hope you understand the logic how this is running, right? Okay. So what can we do is so whenever so what I do is whenever we have this thing of moving up, right, down, and left. So I always prefer to make dx and dy array because it uh, saves us a lot, lot of uh, uh, more code, lot of uh, repeating code, let's say, right? So let's make first the coordinate thing. So if I am at particular position i and j, and if I move up, then that means that I am moving into the above row, but at the same column. So I will say i minus one comma j. If I move right from this point, then I will say that I'm at the same column, same row, but I'm moving one column ahead in the right direction, right? If I move down, then I will say that I am moving one row ahead down, but at the same column, right? If I move left, then I am at the same row, but I'm moving one column behind at, at my current direction. So if I just update it, this is the up, this is the right, this is the down, and this is the left, right? If I update it, if I move up, the changes in the x coordinate will be i becomes i become from i to i minus one so i will say minus one and j becomes j remains j to j right so we are we are not adding anything or subtracting so i will say zero similarly for right i will say that i and i are not changing so i will say zero j becoming j plus one so i will say one right similarly for down i is becoming i plus one so i will say plus one and j is not changing so i will say zero similarly for left i will say that i is not changing so i will say zero and left is getting that the j pointer is getting uh, subtracted by one so i will say here minus one right so this is my thing of moving the directions right now the two cases that were given were he i need to traverse until and unless i'm getting out of bound right until and unless i'm getting out of bound so how we can write that condition i will use a while loop and i will say that i will keep on traversing till i'm inbound of the array so i will say if i is greater than equals to zero and what i is less than m and then what j is greater than equals to zero and and j should be less than n so this would be my while condition but i will do all the things right and initially initially they said that my current pointer will be at zero comma zero so i will say that my initially i equals to zero j equals to zero and let's say direction direction right so if you make this arrow direction was right so if you make this array, if you if you make this array, then what is the indexes here? It is, the indexes will be 0, 1, 2, 3. And 1 means what? That you are you are pointing to the coordinates of right. So I, I will say that since i is equal to 0, as I mentioned in the question, we are moving from the first cell, and the direction is equal to right. But according to my this dx dy coordinates, the right is nothing but the index 1 coordinates. Right? Right. Okay. So Okay, I hope you are you are clear till this point. So what I what I have to do now that I will make uh, some bunch of two variables also that current i that what is my current i because it will be updated in each and every traversal, right? So I will make current i is equals to zero as of now, and current j is also pointing to zero. So what the pseudo code should I will write? So I will each and every traversal I will store my ith pointer and jth pointer because when it goes out of bound, you have to return your ith and jth position you were right here when it goes out of bounds you need to return this position so i will store it and i will say j now there are two conditions right that if array of i and j is equals equals to zero right and there is one else condition which is actually pointing to array of i and j is equals equals to one this is the else condition so if it is zero then what the condition is what the question is saying that move in the direction which in which you were moving move in the direction uh, or let's say move in the current direction in which you were moving right so instead of making dir i will say this variable as current di current direction right okay so what i need to do is i need to move in the current direction and the direction is actually the index here of our coordinates right one is representing right two is representing down and left so what I will write is I will just update my coordinates like i plus equals to dx of direction and j plus equals to dx of direction, 
right? And in the else part, what I will do is first I need to change the direction. So that means that if I am going right, it should be down, right? If I am going up, it should be right. If it is right, it should be down and down to left and left to up. You can see that, right? And what exactly is happening in our DX and DY array? According to the question mentioned, it is saying that when I'm at this index, when I'm at index one, that is representing right, you need to traverse, you need to update this thing to two, right? Right? That right becomes down now. And when I'm this position down, you need to update this to three, right? So how can I manipulate the directions now? I will just show you. So how can I manipulate the directions is I will just use some mathematical operations. So what I'm saying, what it is saying is when you are at direction, my direction is representing with the bunch of indexes. So it is zero, one, two, three, and zero means up, ones mean right, two means down, according to my dx and dy, and three means left. And what I need to convert it into up, if it is up, then I need to convert it into right. So let me use the different color here. I, I need to convert it into right. If it is right, I need to convert it into down, down to left and left to up. So it is nothing, but if you are at direction zero, then the right is pointing at index one, down is pointing at index two, left is pointing at index three and up is pointing again at index zero. So what you have to do is if you are at, if your direction is pointing zero, then you just have to do plus one. If it is one, then again, you have to do plus one. Similarly for two, if you do plus one, you will get three. But in three, if you do plus one, it will give you as four, right? Not zero. So that means that we are traversing in circular path, in circular path, circular path, I can say, right? And to retrieve the indexes in the circular path, what we do is we do plus one, that is for sure. But what we do, we do it modulo by the number of directions we have, that is modulo four, right? We can do that. Then you can see that zero plus one, modulo four is equals to one. Then you can see that one plus two, one plus one modulo four is equals to two. Then you can see two plus one modulo four is equals to three. And similarly for this case, I can say that three plus one modulo four is pointing to zero, right? So in the else case, I will update my direction as direction is equals to direction plus one modulo four, right? And I will do the same things as mentioned by question that array of i and j make it as zero and update the coordinates. So i plus equals to what dx of my current direction and j plus equals to what dx of my current direction. And this while loop ends here, right? And this will end only if the indexes will go out of bound. So when it goes index out of bound, then I just need to return that i and j for it went out of bound, right? So I will just say that return new int the array and put the current coordinates for which the indexes went out of bound that is current i and current j and that was the main reason that I was always storing the ith and j pointer before processing it right. So that is it. So I hope you are getting the things that I am doing here. So let's start with the coding section and what the and let's decide the global steps that we need to code first. So step one will be like to declare all the variables I, I need i, j, direction, current direction, and current i and current j, right? Then step two will be making this thing, making the dx and dy array, right? And the third thing will be to do a while loop. So let's do it. So let's do it. Okay. So step one is to like initialize all the variables so it will be int i equals to 0 int j equals to 0 and int let's say current direction is equals to 1 and int current i is equals to 0 int current j is equals to 0 so i have done all the initialization step 2 will be to initialize the dx and dy array so let's make it so for int dx will be having some bunch of coordinates right and the order will be in the in this sense the order will be in this sense that we will go we are going up then right then down and then left so 
so it is always very convenient if you have to move in all the direction maintains dx and dy array just like we uh, just like i always do in my graph so if you watch any graph videos of mine in purity i have always done this thing it's like reduce the complexity of code like you do not have to re repeat again and again your code okay so the coordinates for minus 1 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0, right similarly for it the j coordinates corresponding to it will be 0 comma 1 comma 0 comma minus 1 Hmm, great. Now the step three will be key. I'll keep on traversing till, till I till I'm inbound. Till inbound. Let me write it like this. Yes, till inbounds. So I will say that while my I is greater than equals to zero and and I should be less than M and and J should be greater than equals to zero. At the same time, J should be less than N. Right? And I will store my current indexes like my current I is pointing to I as of now, and current J is pointing to J. Right? The two cases, the two sub cases as mentioned by question, that question by question is if array of I and J. Is equals equals to zero then i need to do what then i need to move in the same direction or let's say i need to continue moving in same direction right so i will not update the direction no. i will not update the direction i will say <clears throat> that just update the indexes that i plus equals to dx of dir <clears throat> and j plus equals to dy of I have used the variable current dir, right? So current dir, current dir, yes. Okay, and let me write one more thing that index zero, that uh, up is pointing to index zero, right is pointing to index one, the down is pointing to index two, and the left is pointing to index three. And that's why in this line number fifty one, I initialize the current direction as one because it was said that at cell zero comma zero, you need to move in the right direction, right? So there will be else case now where the uh, array of i and j will be equals to 1, right? And for that thing what I can write is, so first I need to update the directions, right? And, uh, and I already explained you that how I have to update the direction. The direction is equals to direction plus 1 modulo 4. Modulo 4, right? Then, I, then according to the question, what is saying that as soon as you are hitting the uh, the elements as one, update the direction. The second task you do is to update the elements as zero, right? And then you update the coordinates. So I plus equals to it will be same as the above thing. So I will just copy paste it. Okay. Okay. Great. Hmm. Great. So this will keep on uh, keep on going into the uh, matrix until and unless the index goes out of bound and when it goes out of bound it will be exiting from the for loop and we just have to capture those capture the, the current i and current j for which it went out of bound right and that was the main purpose of storing this current i and current j right because i and j will be pointing to the index that is out of bound so I will say that return new int. I will make the array here itself and I will pass the coordinates which is the answer. So current i and current j will be our answer. That is it. So let's compile and run. Let's compile and run again. Okay, so there is one some one more semicolon left. Okay, so cannot find symbol because I have used current direction as my variable and not direction. So let me update it as <clears throat> update it again and we will see. <clears throat> so that is it. We, our output and expected output matches. And before hitting the submit button, 
uh, I'll we'll discuss about the time complexity that it will pass or not why waste our summation so we are doing nothing but <clears throat> we are maintaining the space complexity of O of 4 so that will be constant we are maintaining some variables we are doing while loop that is we are the worst will be traversing each and every element in our matrix so that will be O of n and rest all the tasks that is that is uh, going through inside the while loop is O of 1 so the time complexity here will be O of O of n and space complexity will be O of 1 right and if we look at the constraint part if we look at the constraint part it is n is actually 10, 10 power 3 so n cross m will be we are the worst case will be that we are visiting all each and every element so the, the time complexity will be n cross m that is 10 power 3 into 10 power 3 that gives us 10 power 6 right which is obviously less than 10 power 8 so we have coded a solution in 10 power 6 time complexity which is less than 10 power 8 so it should not give TLE if you do not understand this 10 power 8 logic I have made this video on the time complexity regarding the power of constraint you must watch it it must be flashing up here now so let's uh, what uh, let's submit the code now So great, I can see that all the test cases passed, right? And we were able to successfully do this problem in very much uh, uh, less amount of code, let's say, because we used this DX and DY array and we uh, updated the direction using the indexes. That was the main logic. If this thing does not click to you, you can also maintain a map also, right? To allow the entries to, to map the entries from up to right to right to down, down to left and respectively, right? You can do that, but why to waste this space if you can do it within uh, with, within using an, an uh, DX and DY array. So that's the power of it. And okay, so let's meet in the next video of day 100, one, day uh, 106. And few last thing that that's my DSL repository where the code gets pushed. Every time I submit on GFG, you can start and fork to get help with the source code. As well as this my Instagram channel, you can connect me here as well as on LinkedIn. I can see that many of you are started connecting me and asking the doubts that they are. I'm facing some problem here. So that's great. Kudos to you. And you can connect me here as well as LinkedIn for any doubts and guidance again. And yes, we'll meet in the tomorrow's video. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. Take care and bye-bye.